Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to more Logical Journey of the Zumbinis. Continuing with the Oso oh Hard Rank today, we are finally going down to the Deep Dark Forest, where we can complete that on the second difficulty. Let's see what's in store for us today. There's no sense leaving it up to chance. Lure the fleens off the tree branch. So welcome to fleens on Oh So Hard. Let's see how this has changed. <clears throat> Why can't I click on the help sign? That's weird. Alright, I can't click on the help sign, but the nice thing is, as far as I'm concerned, this is absolutely no different from the first difficulty rank. The one thing that might be different is that on the first difficulty rank, I haven't confirmed this, but it could be that every trait carries over. So it could be like if you play it once on the first difficulty, and it's like, oh, well, spiky purple flame hair corresponds to bull cut. It'll be the same way on every other time you do it. I haven't found that to be the case, though, and literally nothing else has changed. So, let's put this guy out front. Alright, so... That actually tells us a good deal. We need somebody with his same feet, same eyes, and same hair to get that guy out of the tree. Same feet, hair, and eyes. That'll be this guy. <laughs> Likewise, we're going to need somebody with spiky hair, but different everything else to get that guy out of the tree. And somebody with different everything else there. So, spiky guy was nothing in common with anybody uh, anybody there. Can't be that guy. Can't be that guy. Could be this guy. Could be that guy. Actually, no, it has to be that guy. He's Or, no, it could be this. No, it couldn't be that guy, because he's got a green nose. Okay, it's this one. Because as we know, hair corresponds to hair, eyes correspond to eyes, nose corresponds to nose, and feet correspond to feet. It's no different from the first version. So now we need a guy here who has a propeller, but different to everything else. Nothing in common with anybody else we've seen. So it can't be her. Can't be her. It's gotta be her. She's the only one left. Well, that was a pretty easy round of fleens. Fortunate for Zumbinis that you are their guide. Well, thank you, man. So, yeah, that's basically no different from the not so easy version. Hurry, Zumbinis. Ula, the forest's foremost, and perhaps only, band leader is about to begin rehearsals. She'll be closing the hotel for the night, so scamper into a room. Oh, boy. This one will have changed quite drastically. Nice, Charlie. Very nice. I gotta close up. Why don't you keep playing? I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this has changed. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Thanks to you and your cousins, we added rooms. But you always show up at closing time. What gives? Anyway, you know the tune. Go and grab a bunk. Gotta go. Practice makes perfect. Unless you practice imperfectly. <laughs> well, that was weird. So, yeah, this looks much more intimidating than last time. We've got 25 rooms instead of just five. 
Hotel Dementia Level 2. After a long journey, the Zumbinis need rooms to stay in overnight. However, only Zumbinis with two features in common, such as red noses and ponytail hair, can room together. One feature tells you a Zumbini's placement by floor, which is the row, and one feature tells you the placement by tree trunk column. Zumbinis in the same row or same column will have variations of the same attribute. For example, the Zumbinis with red noses may all stay on the first floor, green noses on the second, orange on the third, and so on. At the same time, Zumbinis with ponytails stay in the first column, flat tops in the second, shaggy in the third, and so on. So this seems pretty intimidating, but once you understand how it works, it's really not that bad. So the way it works is, at this point, it'll basically say Zumbinis with two specific features in common, maybe like same nose and same hair can room together. Zumbinis with the same nose can stay in like the same column, and then Zumbinis with the same hair can stay in the uh, same row. Might be something like that, but that's all that's determined. The thing like red noses have to stay here, green noses have to stay here, no, that doesn't get determined until you start putting Zumbinis in. So what I like to do to start is find two Zumbinis that tend to have uh, some features in common. So this guy has three features in common with this guy, so let's start with them. Let's put him in a corner. I like starting in the corner. Then we'll see if these guys can room together. Okay. That just told us a lot. That means that feet are important to the puzzle. Zumbinis need to have the same feet to stay together. So let's try putting him in the log over here. All right. So it looks like Zumbinis with pink shoes can stay in this column, and Zumbinis with springs can stay in this column. So now we need to find out what the other trait is, because we know feet determines which column that the Zumbinis can go in. So pink shoes go in here. Maybe it's pink, sh same nose and shoes can room together. Let's try that. She has an orange nose, and that's the only fan, and she also has pink shoes. Nope. All right, well, let's put her up. Because we know she has to go here because she's got pink shoes, but she can't room there, so we must. Uh, we know she's got to be able to go up there. All right, maybe it's the same eyes and same feet. So let's try get rooming this guy with her. Nope. All right, so now we know it's Zumbinis with the same feet and the same hair can room together. So this guy needs a new room. All right. So this guy also has the pink shoes. He will he'll be able to room with him because he also has spiky hair. Excellent, and that's all our pink shoes, so now let's move on to sprains. She's got a sprain, but she's a cyclops. But that doesn't matter, because we don't need to know what eyes she has, we need to know what hair she has. She has green hat hair. We have not selected a row for green hat hair, so at this point we could put her here, or here, and both would be acceptable, because it hasn't determined, well, green hat hairs must stay in this row. We'll put her here. You've got spiky hair, so you can room with that guy. You also have spiky hair in this brain, so you can remove that guy. You've got spiky hair and a bicycle, so you can go here. He could have gotten any of these free rows. You've got sprain and a bowl cut. You go there. So you see how this works now. So we know that it's the same feet and the same hair can room together. Same feet can share a column and same hair can share a row. So doing that, we can figure out exactly where each Zubini needs to be now. You've got a propeller and you've got green hat hair. Excellent. You go here. You've got a propeller and spiky hair. You go here. Another propeller with green hat hair. And another propeller with green hat hair. Then we've got roar skates with a bald tuft. We have nobody who's bald yet, so he has to go in the last row. And he has roar skates. We have nobody with roar skates, so he goes in the last column. You've got roar skates, so you go in the last column. And you've got a bull cut, so you go in the middle row. Oh, just look at the time. Got a split. See you in the morning. So that one's a little bit more intricate than the first difficulty, but it's really not that bad. Once you understand it's basically just two-dimensional now instead of one-dimensional, it's pretty easy to do. Strike the targets one and all, and watch for a pattern on Mudball Wall. This is the one where fiends are going to get a lot more tricky. This one's also hard to explain, so... Let's hope the help does a good job of this. Mudball Wall, Level 2. The Zumbinis need your help in getting over the wall to freedom. Using the Mudball Launcher, hit the sections of the wall with dots on them. The color and shape of the Mudball tells you what section it will hit. Be aware that the pattern that reveals where the Mudball hits will shift diagonally on the Mudball Wall. Wait. Wait, really? Hang on a second. Alright. So let's just start by firing the first Mudball. 
Oh, sweet! It even hit a target. That's lucky. That was really lucky. So now let's change the color to green. Alright, so it looks like squares go in that row. So if we pick every other color of square, we will hit the rest of the targets. So right now this looks pretty much exactly the same as the previous difficulties, so you might be wondering, well, what's changed? Well, you're going to find out once we start firing different shapes. <laughs> but in the meantime, as long as we can just fire every kind of square, that that's really helpful. Because the red square we know has got to hit there. So it's, it's the same that one trait is going to be constant throughout the row, but then the others will alternate. So for example, if this was not so easy, if we just changed the shape to a star, it the, we would know that the red mud ball would launch here, 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 or here. Well, let's try launching it on this difficulty. Oh wow, that was lucky. But you'll notice that doesn't seem right. Yeah, the red isn't de the red no longer determines the column. So what we've got here is shape determines the row. So if we fire stars, they will always fire on this side of the wall. However, it shifts diagonally. So what we've got here is you've got a pattern. We with the, with the squares it goes blue, purple, red, green, orange. Well, guess what? That pattern actually is constant. It just shifts slightly. So up here it would be red is here. Green is here, orange is here, blue is here, purple's there. It's the same pattern, it's just shifted slightly. And they make it so that you won't get two of the same color in the same column. And of course, it could be different. It could be that color determines column, like every time. It could have been green is always in this column, and then the shape shifts, depending on which color it is. But it's not the case here. So what we want to do is we want to hit this square. So we know the stars go in this row, and we know the pattern. It goes blue, purple, red, green, orange. So red, purple, blue. Blue star is going to hit us right there. And keep in mind that this pattern also works vertically as well. So we now know the vertical pattern is something blue, red, something, something. Oh, actually, we know it's something blue, red, orange, because orange is right beneath red, something else. Very interesting. So now we need to find a different shape. Let's try a circle, and let's try to hit there. And so we know it can't be blue. We also know it can't be red or orange. So it's green or purple. Let's try green. Nope. All right, but now we know it's blue, red, orange, purple, green. So that's pretty cool. So we now know the horizontal and the vertical patterns. It all You just need to parse the data. So you've got the blue here and then the red here. Then on this side of the wall, we've got the red here and then the orange here. Something there and then green. We know blue is above this. So it's blue, red, orange, something green. The only color left is purple. So we have the vertical pattern now as well. So if blue's on the top, two up from it will be purple. So this one is going to be purple, and we've got to pick a new shape. It's either going to be diamond or triangle. And it's diamond. So this one's a little harder to wrap your head around than the previous one. But once you know that one of the features will guaranteed determine either row or column, and then the other one has a set pattern that just gets shifted on the diagonal, it's it's easier to comprehend. And this one is hard to understand, so if you don't understand it, just give it a try and eventually it'll click for you. So now we need this one. The last shape has to be triangle and one below purple is going to be green. So we're going to hit a green and it's going to hit there. That's the deep dark forest on Oh So Hard. The puzzles, besides flames, the puzzles are a bit more in intimidating, 
but just wait till we get to the next difficulty. The puzzles are going to be like, what the heck? Especially the hotel. The hotel is just unfair on the next difficulty. You'll see Good why. Good work. Again, you brave the challenges of the trip. Beware the new dangers of the mountains of despair. Thank you, man. Uh. Okay, then. <gasps> I should have clicked on this stuff earlier. Hey, we got a lit fire now. That's pretty cool. Anyhow, let's go to Zumbini, though, and see the new building we got. Oh, ho! This firehouse honors the Zumbinis who flustered the fleens, didn't dally at Hotel Dementia, and mastered the mudball making machine when traveling was oh so hard. April 6th, 2018. They made a firehouse that was made of wood? Um, okay. Sure, why not? All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. What I'm going to do in between this episode and the next one, I'm going to send another group along this path. We're going to go to Who's Bayou and then up the Mountains of Despair. I'm also going to take the group I just put there up the Mountains of Despair. And what that's going to do is I will have passed Who's Bayou twice, so I'll need to pass by it one more time before I can complete it on Oh So Hard. And then what else is going to happen is the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry and the Mountains of Despair are going to go up to very hard. So I'll be able to show those off in the next two episodes. So until then, have a great day. And God bless.